Household finances are under pressure at the moment because of the rising cost of living. So it's no surprise that crooks are trying to capitalise on this by offering very high returns to entice people into their scams. So in this video, we look at the red flags that help you identify those scams. This video is sponsored by Shortform, which provides super powered book summaries. So let's look at investment scams in a bit more detail. It turns out that investment fraud is currently on the rise. For example, in the UK, the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau estimates that almost a billion pounds was lost over the last financial year. And in the US, the amount of money lost to investment fraud has almost doubled to $3.8 billion. So how can we spot these frauds? In this video, we're going to look at the red flags to try and identify them and to stop you falling victim to these scammers. I say one of the most reliable red flags is cold calls. Now, reputable financial companies will not cold call you. They may advertise and then you can choose whether you respond to that advertisement once you've done your research. But if it's a cold call or a direct message on Twitter or another social media platform, then it's almost certainly a scam. Now, usually your financial regulator will have a list of regulated companies. So you can always make a note of the company and call them back on the regulator's listed phone number. That way you can be sure that you're calling the right person and not some company which is falsely identifying themselves as a regulated advisor, say. Another very reliable red flag is the offer of very high returns. Now, what constitutes a very high return? Well, anything that's exceptionally higher than stock returns, which remember over the long term have been around 9% if you look at total return. So anything which offers you, say, 15%, 20% or more every year should be considered slightly suspect, but certainly would be very risky. That's because if you increase the return, there's no question that you'll increase the risk of your investment. So 20% return would come with much higher risk. And that means the risk of catastrophic loss, unrecoverable loss. And of course, if it's a scam, then potentially 100% loss. So recently I got this message via an email and it said, is this you selling courses in the United States? And it's not, although it's using my picture. So it's very easy to clone an image or clone a company name and pretend that you're offering services based on that trusted person. How could you tell it's not me? Well, for starters, I would not be talking about returns where you get 50% profit in a single week. That would be crazy. And I always stress the fact that I don't give financial advice. I provide financial education so that you can make up your own mind about what to invest in. And during the cryptocurrency boom, I got so sick of people leaving comments about cryptocurrency scams in the comments of my videos that I started rating them. So this one got four out of 10. And that's because it did a pretty good job of saying that you should look for approved brokers but then it let itself down because it slipped into the very high return offer. It said that you can make $17,000 from just $3,000 over the course of two weeks. Now, I like to read around when it comes to investment books and short forms an incredible tool when I do that. That's because it allows me to not just see book summaries, which save me a lot of time. It also allows me to see the context of the knowledge contained within the book. It often represents alternative points of view, or perhaps it'll quote from other books which deal with the same knowledge for the book you're reading. Also, it doesn't stop me buying the book itself. If there's a book I really enjoy in the short form summary, then I will go out and buy it. But it also allows me to remember the key points from the book after I've finished reading it. So for example, one book I found useful for this video was The Smartest Guys in the Room, which is to do with Enron. So you can see it has the one page summary so that you can very quickly see the key points in the book. But then it also has very detailed summaries of the concepts from the book. And then that integration feature, which I was talking about, in this case, it's really interesting. What they do is they turn around the question and they say, how do you avoid building an Enron if you're building your own company? And they go through a kind of checklist for bad practices to avoid. Now, the books that Shortform deals with are non-fiction books. And of course, my favourite topic would be money and finance. But I'm also interested in topics in economics, business, but even psychology, because I know that affects investment decisions. 
They also publish articles on things which are in the news or which are just generally interesting. Shortform also comes with a browser extension at no extra cost, which allows you to take any article that you're looking at in your browser and summarize it into bullet points. So here it is in my browser extensions, and you can see it's made a very detailed point-by-point -point summary of the article. But of course, being short form, it goes beyond that, and it creates this context section, which explains the broader picture behind the Wirecard scandal, how it's one of the biggest accounting frauds in German history, but also things about the role of auditors in maintaining the integrity of reporting companies. In addition to that, it has links so that you can learn more about the topics behind the article. So for example, here's an article from Reuters. And it presents counter arguments which present the other side of the story. And at the bottom, if there's any related short form content, it'll show you where it is and give you a link to it. Now, as a viewer of Pension Craft, you get a 25% discount to your premium annual subscription. And you can access that by going to the URL shortform.com slash pensioncraft. You'll find that in the description. Or alternatively, you can just scan this QR code. Now, one area that's rife with scams is foreign exchange. Now, the fundamental problem with foreign exchange is that the returns tend to be zero over long periods of time. Why is that? Well, for any major currency pair like sterling versus the dollar, there isn't a huge amount of drift over time. Compare that with stocks, where as profits increase year by year, you get an average increase in the stock prices of around 9% over the long term. Even if you adjust for inflation, stock returns reduce to about 6% per year. Whereas currencies are driven by interest rate differentials, and amongst developed markets, interest rates are usually roughly equal. So there isn't a huge driver one way or the other. So here I've compared the price of the total US stock market, and this is data taken from the Simba spreadsheet produced by the Bogleheads Forum. And you can see that that's increased 19 fold over this roughly 50 year period. Compare that with sterling versus the dollar, that's just halved over the period. Or if you flip it around, the dollar's doubled in strength versus the pound over that period. So while with stocks, you can just buy them, hold them for a long period of time and make money, for currency, you can't do that. And that forces you into this very short term way of thinking. Now, over short periods of time, currencies essentially are like flipping a coin. Hardly anyone can predict which way they'll move. I used to be friends with lots of currency strategists who were super bright. And yet, to be fair to them, they didn't have a clue which way the currency would move over a short period of time. So let's look at the red flags in the foreign exchange space, bearing in mind this problem with the short termism. The first red flag, I think, is bling. So here's a search on YouTube for videos about foreign exchange trading. And immediately you start seeing the Lambos, the Lamborghinis, the flash mansions, the swimming pools. The truth is that no investment is going to generate the kind of returns you need to take a modest amount and buy you a Lamborghini. So if you see videos with that kind of bling on display, that should push you away immediately. What these people are offering snake oil are very high returns over a very short period of time. Maybe you'll be lucky with leverage over that short period of time and you will win big, but it's much more likely that you'll end up with a big loss. Another red flag is offering you a secret trading strategy. Here's a post from Facebook which has that very red flag. I want to introduce you to my secret strategy that can generate you huge profits. That's another red flag within a short period of time. Another red flag. The system is 100% accurate. Another red flag. No trading strategy is 100% accurate. And then finally, a guaranteed payout. Another red flag. Remember, these guarantees are only good as the person who offers them. And who's offering the guarantee here? And then finally, we end on another red flag, which is the spectacular and unbelievable return. You invest a minimum of $500, and that can earn you $5,000 in seven trading days. Another variant of that is trading signals. So here, for example, you'll be told when a given price, it could be euro dollar, it could even be a stock, is going to go up or down. Now, as I said previously, over very short periods of time, you may as well flip a coin to decide which way the price is going to move. And you've got to ask yourself the question, if this company can generate these very good signals, 
Why aren't they trading on the basis of that information themselves? Why are they offering to sell it to you for a pretty low price? Now, hedge funds do pay for these kind of trading signals, but you can bet that they're paying a lot of money for them. And they're also thoroughly backtested. But the kind of price that a retail investor like you and I can pay will not get very powerful signals. Also, it's worth looking up the provider of the signals. In this case, you can see it's investfxsignals.com. And if we do that on the Financial Conduct Authority's website in the UK, you can see that they believe this firm is providing financial services or products in the UK without authorization. And also that you should be wary of dealing with this unauthorized firm. And that's because you won't receive FSCS guarantees. So if you do run into trouble with the signals you get from the firm, you won't have any recourse to the financial services compensation scheme or indeed to the financial ombudsman service. And then finally, the last red flag for Forex is trading courses. Now, you've probably seen this guy's videos popping up on your stream. If you watch my videos, I certainly used to have him pop up all the time. And he describes how he's going to try and teach his gardener how to trade FX. And if he becomes a success and I end up having to mow my own lawn, things have gone really bad. And that followed on apparently from his success at teaching his cleaner how to trade Forex. So he says, I taught my housekeeper how to become a currency trader. Within about three months, she'd become so confident she had quit a job. So I no longer had a housekeeper and she became a currency trader. And he claims she made £6,800 over the course of eight weeks. So it's a good thing to bear in mind that even hedge funds, macro hedge funds that try to predict foreign exchange movements over short periods of time often fail to do so, despite having staff who are incredibly bright, very well resourced and very well paid. So it's unlikely that you, by doing one of these courses, could do so. And also remember the saying in Wall Street, which is often bandied about, which is that if you want to make a million dollars in Forex, start off by investing a billion. Now, one of the things which is the bane of my existence is that in the YouTube comments for our videos, we get lots of ads for fake advisors. Now, we're always trying to weed out these comments, but they always have a fairly similar pattern. There's an initial comment, then you get lots of replies to it. And in this case, it's referring to an advisor, which is Julie Ann Hoover. Now, the comment says you should Google her. And if you do, you go to this website, which is julianhoover.com. And it's a very plausible website. It's very well designed, easy to use. And it even has the registration with FINRA, the US regulator for Julianne Hoover. However, if you actually look up the picture of Julianne Hoover, which you can see here using something like Google image search, what you find is that it's an image of Kate Garza, who's a very photogenic lady living in the United States. So if you see these YouTube comment advertisements for advisors, ask yourself, why are they advertising in YouTube comments for free? Surely that means they're not legitimate. And in this case, I think that's probably the case. Now, they've actually been quite clever about it, because if you look up Julie Hoover on the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority in the US or FINRA, she is someone who works in the finance industry. So maybe the way you should approach this is if you find somebody's name and you want to look them up, look on the FINRA database and then contact that advisor that they work for directly. Don't go via the website, which is pointed to from the YouTube comments. Another scam which people do is they clone our channel. Literally, they take our logo and reply to the comments as if it's coming from us, which is particularly galling. How can you tell it's us? Well, if you look at the actual name next to our logo, you see it's at Pensioncraft with a little tick next to it. Well, that means it's the real deal. Another place to be wary is new and unregulated asset types. And here, of course, I'm thinking about cryptocurrency, where many of the exchanges turned out to be doing something slightly questionable or were completely fraudulent, like FTX. So often it's not the cryptocurrency itself which is the problem. The blockchain's quite solid, as is the currency. The problem is how you get your money out of your fiat bank account and put it onto the blockchain via these cryptocurrency exchanges. Until those are regulated, I still think that this is going to be the wild west of investment. People often slam the regulators because they see them as a threat or somehow impinging on their freedom. But in fact, it's there to protect you. 
as an investor. So sticking to regulated markets and regulated exchanges is actually a way to filter out a lot of the fraud and to avoid a lot of these scams. Another shiny red ball that came out recently was mini bonds. These are effectively loans to very small companies, which also come with a very high credit risk. Now these have no secondary market. So if you wanted to sell your mini bond, you couldn't, despite the fact that you might think the company was about to go under. Now the Financial Conduct Authority in the UK has actually banned advertisements for these to retail investors. Ads can only be posted for sophisticated investors for these products. But many people got burnt with the very high returns offered by these bonds. So if it's unregulated and it's new and it's offering you a very high return, that's a red flag. And finally, even companies which trade on an exchange, which are regulated, can perpetuate accounting fraud. The most famous example of that, which we saw in that short form example, is Enron. Now this was a huge deal when it collapsed in 2001 in the United States because it was such a huge company. It was the sixth largest company in America at the time. And in this picture you can see the two bosses of Enron, Ken Lay and Jeffrey Skilling, who created the culture in which a lot of this fraud was perpetuated. Now they even managed to fool the auditors who were looking at their accounts, which was Anderson. But a lot of the things which they did were absolutely legal. For example, they borrowed money via special purpose entities, which were off balance sheet, and which were therefore invisible on the company accounts. They also had a lot of incentives to push through deals, even if they wouldn't have been profitable. How could you have avoided losing money with Enron? Well, if you invest in single stocks, you really couldn't. I don't think you could have looked at the accounts and found an obvious red flag. The only way to dodge this bullet would have been to be very diversified, not to have too much money in a single company. So if you had an index fund, for example, the losses would have been much smaller than if you had a concentrated position in Enron, say. And more recently, the Wirecard scandal had many of the same hallmarks. They managed to convince their accountants that there was nothing funny going on, despite the fact that the company had not been profitable for many years. They even managed to convince the auditor that 1.9 billion euros was in their account when actually it wasn't. And this whole fraud was only uncovered because of some incredible investigative journalism by Dan McCrum and others at the Financial Times. And again, the only way you could have protected against this was by being diversified. What would have been a problem is if you'd allocated too much capital to Wirecard because it seemed to have unbelievably good returns. So in summary then, if we list some of the red flags which we've picked up along the way, I think the one which is most obvious is when you see very high returns. And here we're talking about more than 10%. It is possible that you get very high returns on a stock for short periods of time, but it should always make you wary of fraud. Try and work out where the returns come from and if you can't figure it out, maybe it's not real. Another problem is guaranteed returns. Who's doing the guaranteeing? Particularly if you see high return and guaranteed, that's a really bad red flag. The two never go together. Another thing to avoid is if somebody contacts you, either via a phone call or perhaps in your DMs. Legitimate companies will never do that. You probably also want to avoid unregulated investments. These may offer attractive returns, but remember the regulation is there to protect you. So if it trades on a regulated investment exchange, like a bond or a stock, that's probably going to filter out a lot of the scams. And it also means that you can trade it in a very liquid marketplace. Conversely, if you go for illiquid investments like property, for example, you may not be able to sell your investment in a timely way, particularly in a falling market. So that's probably something you also want to avoid. If you're getting time pressure when you're making your decision, that's usually a sales tactic to make you buy something which isn't a particularly good investment. You should always take your time. And if you feel rushed, just step back. It's probably not worth it. And the final red flag, which applies to everything, is that if it looks too good to be true, it probably isn't. Now, I hope some of these red flags have shown you what to look out for. Don't be suckered in by these very high returns that many people are offering, because many of those simply aren't realizable. A reasonable rate of return for a long period of time is a much better way to achieve investment success. And it's certainly what we've been teaching for a long time now. 
Now, don't forget our offer from Shortform. If you want to get access to that, you can use our URL, shortform.com slash pensioncraft. You'll also find that in the description beneath me. And as always, thank you for listening.